a lantern of wishes. It appeared only to those who really needed their wish to come true. This legend was told by gypsies from the old state and reached as far as the Clemency Empire, and may he make everyone happy. Suddenly, the girl woke up. The words of the priest who accompanied the Count couple on their last journey sounded around her. The girl did not understand where she was now. The last thing she remembered was falling asleep in her home, in the bathroom. A nearby maid noticed her shocked face and asked if she was okay, calling her by the name Sharon. Hearing this, the heroine was seriously frightened, because that was not her name at all. After graduating from college, losing her parents, she had to work hard, and at the age of 28, she was finally able to buy a nice apartment. She was so happy that she even decided to treat herself to chicken and beer and read her favorite novel. The Empress's Glittering Gate was a novel that stuck with her. All the characters were not only attractive, but also outstanding in their field, although Sharon, despite her beauty, did not really stick with her. In her heart, she would like to live like this girl from the novel, to have no worries, a beauty from childhood, and not need anything. And if she became her, life would be easier. Now the heroine could not believe that she had really become the girl from the novel, hoping that it was just a dream. The maid, seeing this reaction, hugged the girl, assuring her that she was still so young, but had already experienced the pain of loss, and therefore she would always be with the young lady. And she, in turn, looked at the fresh grave. Although it was their first meeting, the heroine hoped that he had gone to heaven. Suddenly, the little girl woke up screaming, and now, terrified, she realized that it was not a dream after all. Her hands remained as small as ever. Sharon is a minor character in the novel The Empress's Glittering Gate, or rather, she was a minor character who died at the end along with the thief, Sharon Cake Von Atrina, the only daughter of Count Atrina, who at the age of eight had already lost her parents. After attacking the prince's bride, Carla was sentenced to death, and Sharon, her friend, also caught in the act, was executed. The girl now realized that she may have become the most beautiful girl in the land, but it was of no use, because soon she would face an unjust death and would never see her hard-earned home again. Suddenly, she realized that death could be avoided, and she had only to re-educate Carla, both of whom were now eight years old, which meant that it would not be difficult to re-educate her, and therefore worth a try. Subsequently, they met with the Duke of Grattoni, who was Carla's father, and he stated that he would now be the child's guardian until she came of age, and he would leave the choice of a lawyer to the nanny. But if that became problematic, his family's lawyer could always be used. The woman responded by asking whether she could really be trusted with such a case, and the aristocrat, with a cold look, assured her that his duty to his sister was only to become the guardian of her child, and he did not intend to do anything else. When he finished, he left them, and the nanny noticed that her uncle must be a very busy man, but the heroine didn't care about him at all. Her goal was Carla, and she had to make this thief befriend her by any means necessary. When they met for the first time, the heroine formally introduced herself, as was customary for aristocrats, but heard nothing in return, and then the nanny suggested that Carla greet her back, as she had been taught during her etiquette lessons, but she just waved her off, saying that they shouldn't dare feed her or greet her, because it was a waste of time to do so with someone like her. After meeting her, the evil girl went to her room, but the heroine did not intend to let her go, and asked her back if she really wanted her not to eat, to which Carla hastily asked what she was getting at, and then Sharon came closer, asking her to think for herself, because without her, she would eat all alone. Although Carla behaved like a whimsical little princess, she was very concerned about the prestige of the ducal family, and therefore did not let anyone near her, and therefore she always ate alone. At the moment, this girl, very shy, claimed that the heroine was talking nonsense, but she took her hands and sweetly suggested that they share a meal together, and she could cut meat neatly, and it would be nice to read books together and eat fruit sherbet. The young aristocrat uncertainly said that Madame had told her that she should do such things on her own, and Sharon assured her that it would remain between the two of them, their little secret, and then gently asked in her ear, 
if she would not really like to read a book while eating, and even that she could keep secret. And in the end, holding out her hand, the heroine asked what her answer would be, whether she was still going to pretend to be evil. And in response, Carla, holding out her hand and a little shy, assured that she was a little hungry. And so they went holding hands to the dining room, and the heroine was happy that she managed to make friends with her. She began to spend whole days with Carla, and she was surprised that the girl did not want to leave her side anymore. And once again, while reading the book, the girl asked how she could read something so difficult, and whether she understood everything she was reading, to which her friend assured her that it was quite easy because she was older. The young aristocrat was outraged by this, and therefore claimed that her birthday was later than hers, when the heroine turned to the bookcase and, taking one of the books, handed it to Carla, offering her to read it herself. The girl suddenly shrank away, claiming that she had no desire and just liked to listen more. But Sharon, realizing that this was an obvious lie, had a hard time reading until Carla was 13, and all because she had taken over from the Duchess a love of extravagance, quarrelsomeness, and intimidation. The friend assured her that if she worked with her, she would be able to read without any problems, because learning letters was not so difficult. And Carla all the time assured that she could read, but shyly always added that it would never be superfluous to repeat, and so today she would read. But next time it would be her turn. They tried to read together, and the heroine read, The prince hugged the maid tightly, and then he asked her to marry him. Carla was outraged, assuring her that it was all nonsense, and her mother told her that a maid could never become a queen. Sharon, in response, angrily asked to listen, because it was only a fairy tale, not real life. At that moment, one of the maids came in, apologizing for disturbing her, and then saying that it was time for lunch, and the heroine rose, asking Carla to do the same, assuring her that they would eat first and sleep a little, and then she would read to her again. Suddenly, Carla stood up angrily and started shouting at the maid, claiming that she had been told in clear language not to distract them when they were together, and only Sharon stopped her from hitting the maid. The angry girl demanded to know why she was stopped, and so her friend asked what she was going to do now. Carla explained that the maid had prevented her from enjoying reading with her friend, and so it was clear that she had to punish her with a slap. It should be obvious. Exhaling heavily, the heroine could not understand why she still considered this to be normal, and it seemed that she had made a mistake somewhere while teaching her. The aristocrat saw this reaction in her friend, and frightened asked why she also began to get angry. And she, in turn, asked the maid to leave, assuring her that they would leave as well. The girl began to lecture Carla, asking who had taught her this, and whether she really thought it was right to hit a person, but she answered frightened that it was her mother who said that bad maids should be punished. Suddenly, the heroine did something unpredictable. Namely, she slapped her friend on the head, to which she asked in confusion why she did it, and Sharon, smugly asking if it hurt her, confirmed that it was obvious. Sharon continued her lesson, reminding her how she had said not so long ago that bad behavior should be beaten, and now she asked if the maid would be hurt if she decided to hit her, the young aristocrat continued to assure her that her mother had always said that maids did not hurt when they were beaten, and it seemed that her mother had lied to her. The heroine brought up the girl in her own way, and therefore, holding her cheeks, she said that the maids hurt as much as they did. And if she did not listen to her, her friend would no longer play with her. And so when I finished, I asked what Carla had learned from all this. The offended girl said that others, just like her, were in pain and therefore should not be hit, to which the young teacher breathed a sigh of relief and asked her not to do it again, otherwise she would be punished for it later, and after that, they went to lunch again in a good mood, taking a book with them. A month passed, and the heroine and her nanny were resting under a tree on a beautiful sunny day, but the girl was always in her thoughts and so the woman noticed that it would be nice if she could enjoy such good weather. After a moment, Sharon said that she was curious about how much power the Duke had given her, and so she asked the woman to find out what budget she had been given. She was interested in this because she had plans to go to school. It would be difficult to find out, but the nanny assured her that she would try. 
The woman said that she was very worried that the lady would not be able to recover after the death of her parents, but she must have worried in vain, as the girl had already started thinking about studying. It seems that she had grown up very early. Looking at the woman to whom she had no feelings, the heroine realized that she was not her mistress. She had not known her for so long, but she had to continue living, pretending to be Sharon. There was nothing she could do. Since she was stuck here, she would have to slowly get used to life here. In the end, she managed to get close to Carla. And on a night when it was raining and thundering, she came to the heroine's room, claiming that she was scared. After which, the heroine began to calm her friend by reading a bedtime story. After she took possession of this body, the girl often began to have nightmares about the bad moment when she decided to change her life, when she would reach out with a trembling hand to the bloody body, and at the same moment, she would wake up from the dream. And strangely enough, she always wondered who she had killed in that place. But at the same time, she couldn't understand the fear that engulfed her from head to toe. Maybe she shouldn't have changed her fate after all. And this nightmare was a warning from the real Sharon. One morning, the heroine went to wake up her friend, assuring her that today she was supposed to meet the prince, to which she assured her that it was not true. And then the girl forcibly removed the blanket, reminding her that people who lie are bad, and Carla, almost hysterically, began to scream that she did not hate him, he did not like her, and seemed to use her. And when he learned that she could not read books, he began to ignore her altogether. Sharon remembered that in the original, she didn't know that the prince had used her until her death, which means that she had grown up a little, and so her friend wondered how she had found out about it. And so Carla said that her mother had told her that she needed to use the prince, or else he would use her. Suddenly, the young aristocrat asked her friend to go with her to this meeting, and confused by this Sharon, reminded her that she also did not like the prince, but the girl did not listen, and almost crying, objected, assuring that she was the one who hated him the most. But her mother said that she had to meet him every week, but she did not love him so much. He was very bad, always doing things Carla didn't want to do, deliberately to spite her, always ignoring her when she wanted to talk to him, and when she accidentally touched him, he immediately pulled away. After hearing this, the heroine decided to agree, but in return, she asked what she would get for it, and the sleepy girl offered her portion of sherbet. Sharon realized that they wanted to give her a portion of her favorite dessert, but still, she suggested another option, namely that Carla read the books herself for one week, and she, after a little thought, agreed. The first to meet them was a boy, Haru Stein von Atlanta, who greeted them cheerfully, asking who they were with Carla, and she, looking down at the prince, asked her friend to say hello, to which Sharon, formally, following the rules of etiquette, introduced herself to Julian Urkan von Kosobalta, who was the prince himself. Looking at the boy, the heroine realized that she was being ignored, but even as an eight-year-old child, he was still beautiful. And yet, in reality, it was much better than in the novel, and turning around, she saw Carla, who was smugly drilling the boy with her eyes. After a moment, she turned to her friend excitedly, asked him to listen carefully, and then began to explain that she was constantly bragging to Julian that she had a wonderful friend, and told him absolutely everything about how they went shopping together, slept together, ate together, and also how they read books together, and even braided their hair together. Sharon was outraged that their entire personal life had been told to him, but her friend sincerely did not understand what the big deal was, because it was true that her maid always did her hair, which the girl confirmed, assuring her that it was better not to tell everyone. Later, they were having dinner at home, and Sharon's nanny claimed that the lady did not let her comb her hair before bed, and the young girl assured her that she would let her mother know if she needed to, because she was already eight years old, to which the woman said that Sharon was acting far beyond her age, and it seemed as if she was mentally an adult. To change the subject a bit, the heroine asked her friend what happened next, whether Julian started to envy her, and whether he didn't care at all. Carla was a bit indignant at this question, as it meant that she was hardly listened to, and therefore assured that he definitely had to be jealous, because he was a hermit, and she had Sharon. After a minute, Carla assured her friend that she had a request for her, to which she said that it was a request, not an order, 
and that it meant a lot of progress, so she decided to listen to her, and the aristocrat asked her to go with her to meetings with the prince in the future. The heroine tiredly stated that she would be busy, and if she moved around a lot, she would get tired quickly. And in response, Carla began to hysterical, assuring that she would not go then, as she wanted to go there only with Sharon. After a moment, she explained on her own accord, Yes, there was a frightening lady. It was Julian's mother. She always looked at her with a scary look, and apparently the prince was also afraid of his mother, although it seemed that his mother was a very sick person, so her strange face was probably understandable, but her relationship with the prince was somehow strange. But despite all this, she still thought that this woman was very scary. His mother seemed to have some kind of anger towards her. It turned out that in the original novel, he was just copying his mother, and only because of that he decided to execute for the company and Sharon, it seems she was really scary, and in the end, the girl gave up and agreed to go with her. In the evening, while reading the book, the heroine asked her nanny, who was sewing next to her, if she went there with Carla, would the Duchess hate her for it? And the woman assured her that it was unlikely, as the Duchess had been quite quiet lately. And then the girl asked if there might be problems with the Empress, and the nanny assured her that she would most likely like her, because in this way, the Empress would be able to get the support of this family. After a bit of silence, the woman said that she had a friend in the Imperial Palace, and this reassured the girl, it meant that even if the nanny did not go with them, someone would still look after them. And then she noticed that the dining room was too big for them. There were four places for meals. When she and Carla were there, they ate in only two, and so she was overwhelmed with a feeling of unease. After a moment, the nanny asked if she was exactly eight years old, smiling slyly, and the girl with the same smile asked if it was not so. The woman assured that recently the lady had changed a lot, and it was not even clear what it was due to. Perhaps she just grew up faster than others. The heroine continued to insist that they move the meal from the dining room to the terrace, after which she wondered where the Duke and Duchess eat, to which they answered that they always eat in the bedroom or in the study. And upon hearing this, the girl measured the person in front of her with a cold look, not understanding how she knew this. This look made her feel uncomfortable. And then the child, smiling fakely, asked her to leave doubts about each other. And from that moment on, to live together and happily. And after finishing her business, the woman got up, realizing that at the age of eight, such considerations are quite strange. But she assured out loud that the lady seemed to want her secret to be kept, and so it would be. Left alone, the heroine realized that there was no need for suspicion. It would only hinder them when they had to work together. She was not really who she said she was, but she could not say so. Now they had agreed to make peace with Miss Deju. But if she suspected her of anything again, then Sharon would immediately recognize it as an unfriendly gesture. Then the peace would come to an end. The next day, the two girls were on their way to visit in a carriage, and Carla was hugging her friend the whole time. She realized that she had nothing to fear anymore, her mother would probably be the same, but she was busy now. And after all, she could be with Sharon, and with her she was ready to go anywhere. The heroine realized that no matter who her mother was, Carla still loved her, and she began to use bad words much less. And so the heroine felt relieved that under her influence, this girl was able to change. The two girls formally greeted the Empress, to which she smilingly replied that Lady Sharon had decided to visit her today as well, and so she was glad to see her, and then recommended that they also talk to Julian, so she would be happy if they came to see them more often. The boy, bowing, assured her that he hoped they would be able to become friends. The heroine expressed a similar desire, and after that, the woman decided to leave them alone, asking them to feel at home, asking the prince a moment later if he would do well here on his own, and he confirmed it. Left alone, Carla immediately started a quarrel, claiming that she thought Julian was looking worse every time. But he also did not lag behind, and therefore said that it was his words that she was getting uglier every time, after which the girl assured that he did not even have friends, introducing Sharon in a moment. Meanwhile, she watched, not really understanding whether they really hated each other that much. And when she was introduced, 
Julian began to look at her closely, which made her feel uncomfortable, and so she asked if he had anything to say to her. Ignoring the question, Julian asked Carla why she had brought anyone here at all, to which she assured him that she was eager to show off, because he was jealous, since they were having their hair done again today, and he had only to look at how beautifully their hair was blowing in the air. But the boy didn't appreciate it, and said that they looked disgusting, thus angering Carla, and so she ordered him to shut his dirty mouth immediately. But at the same moment, Sharon was already screaming, addressing her friend, wondering who taught her such bad words. He just smiled, and then said that he couldn't stand Sharon anymore, and he couldn't stand her either. And at that moment, she couldn't stand it anymore and attacked the prince, after which she explained to her friend in tears that she did it very lightly, and she shouldn't worry about him, since he was definitely pretending to be in pain. Sharon only briefly asked Carla to go inside, and then went to help him up. But the boy was hysterical, and beat off the hand that wanted to help him, which exposed his forearm, which was covered in wounds. And then she remembered all the words about the prince's mother that Carla had recently told her. It seemed that it was her handiwork, but the heroine did not understand why, and why he was treated so cruelly. There was nothing like that in the original, but she remembered that it was described how the little prince, even in hot weather, always wore closed clothes, and this fact made the girl fall into genuine terror. When she recovered a little, she immediately began to mitigate the situation, asking if he was injured anywhere. Her friend was outraged by such care for the enemy, and the girl ordered her to ask for his forgiveness, and she obeyed without hesitation. She realized that she could not act rashly as they could be watched, and she did not know how the Empress would react if she found out that her secret had been exposed, so she had to act as if nothing had happened. The guy got up and said that if they wanted to, they could sit down and finish their tea, but if not, they could go home, and he had to leave them, as he had to go somewhere urgently. In the end, it turned out that the Imperial Palace was even more terrible and cruel than they thought. When Carla came back, she was nervously chewing on her fingers all the time, and her friend saw it, and so she asked her to stop doing it, since he was not hurt because of her, and then she apologized for scaring her then, but Carla used some bad words about the prince, and so she wondered how she had even heard about them. The girl uncertainly said that she had heard it from her mother, so the heroine asked her not to speak so rudely anymore, and if she promised that she would fulfill any of her wishes, Carla's eyes lit up at these words, and then she assured her that she would like to make cookies together. She enviously assured her that Katrina, who had boasted to her that she could make cookies, Carla, had tried to make them with her mother, but they were not tasty at all. And so now she was determined to make something better than the last time, and therefore wanted to make them together. In response to this, the heroine agreed, asking her to keep her word. Otherwise, she would have no more wishes. Later in the evening, the heroine listened to a report from Miss Deju. She learned that people say that the Empress was obsessed with the prince. This is due to the fact that her first child died, but at the same time, even with the slightest violation of her instructions, she severely punished the boy, and the prince was unable to defend himself or even do anything at all because she is in the hierarchy above. The Empress lost her child because of the Queen. She begged the Emperor to punish the Queen, but he simply replied that it was nothing to worry about, and she could always have another child. In the novel, the Empress was described as a very sad person who had experienced a lot of problems. The woman continued to explain that if the Prince violated his strict schedule and did not attend at least one of the classes, the Empress would severely beat him, and the servants were forbidden to apply ointment to his wounds, and everyone was forced to keep silent about the Empress's atrocities. The prince, in order to hide everything that his mother did to him, tried his best to keep a cold expression on his face, which was not at all like children of his age, and yet the most pitiful of them all was the Empress. The heroine's goal was, of course, to survive, but rescuing the boy from the Imperial Palace was not an option, Overthrowing the ruler was also a bad idea, because a little boy simply could not cope alone in a political struggle. It seemed the only way out was to leave him in this horror. 
It turned out that Carla was not the only one who suffered, and so now that she remembered her words about how nothing was scary when Sharon was around, she felt uneasy, and so she turned to Miss Deju, assuring her that she had a request for her. Later, they met with the prince again, and in a moment they took him by the hand and pulled him to the first aid kit, which scared him at first. Looking at his wound, Carla began to cry, asking if he was in great pain, and if his wounds hurt, because she had once been slightly injured and it was very painful, and it must be even more so for him. After finishing, it was already evening, and on the street the heroine handed him a letter, assuring him that if he suddenly needed her, he could come there, and the guy asked how she even knew about it, because that passage led directly to the prince's bedroom, and then angrily crumpled up the letter, claiming that he was told so calmly about it, but still she could have been imprisoned or even executed for it. Sharon had no intention of answering, so she simply told him that if he came before her, he should wait a little longer, and she would show up. He didn't know why she was doing all this, but he guessed that he wouldn't get an answer anyway, so he promised that he would do just that. After that, he introduced himself again as Julian and asked to call him by his first name in the future, to which the heroine only asked if she could, and the guy confirmed it, as he had asked for it, and he added that it was not necessary to speak so formally because they were the same age. To this proposal, the girl smiled happily and expressed hope that they would have a good time. On the way back, Julian was sincerely glad that he was going back alone, because if someone had seen his red cheeks, they would have definitely told his mother about it. And when he got home, he was still thinking about how Carla managed to find Sharon, and how nice it would be if he was the first to meet her. A week passed, and they visited the Empress again. And as soon as the woman left again, the heroine calmed her friend, who was very frightened, and when Julian asked how she was, Carla immediately looked at him menacingly. The heroine had recently been given a report stating that nothing special had happened over the past week, so she asked the boy directly how he was feeling, and he only looked shyly away, a reaction that angered the girl, and she ordered him to look her in the eye while talking, but the prince answered flippantly, as if it was more convenient for him to speak that way, and she shouldn't care. But still, she was actually already 28, and so it was not so easy to deceive her child. And so she asked him to stop fooling around and give a normal answer. And this time he did turn around and assured her that everything was fine. After receiving the answer, it was time to think about what they would do today. So she gave the floor to her other friends, and Carla immediately offered to drink tea and read something. And at that moment, the heroine screamed, then asked her friend why she had kicked her, but she nervously began to apologize, assuring that she thought it was Julian's leg, and that was an accident. Summing up, Sharon said that they would read books today, when suddenly, her friends simultaneously shouted the word, no. So she gave them a try to suggest something else. Soon, they found themselves at the pond, fishing rods in hand, and in a few minutes, Carla began to resent the fact that she could not catch a fish and Julian explained that it took patience and time to catch a fish. But the girl did not believe him, as her friend had been able to catch a fish quickly before. The heroine didn't really like this activity because it always put her to sleep, and this time was no exception. So she fell asleep on the go, Julian offered to go to sleep if she wanted to, and she didn't find the strength to fight. So she fell asleep right there, asking him to wake her up when they were done. Looking at her, they admired how beautiful Sharon was, how she was like a real princess, how she slept as soundly as a cat. And Carla said she was more beautiful than all her dolls. And word by word, they started to quarrel again, but they stopped because they didn't want her to wake up. Later, Carla told him to listen to her carefully and then told him that he would not dare to do anything that her friend would not like. Otherwise, he might be left alone. And the boy, puzzled by this statement, asked her to tell him in more detail how to behave and then the girl smugly began to tell him that Sharon loved nice children, and if she found out that they were fighting behind her back, she might hate him. So they decided to work together, and suddenly Carla thought hard. She thought that after Sharon, she was the next best thing in terms of beauty, but now it looked like this boy was more beautiful than her, and together they looked like a prince and princess from a fairy tale, 
just perfect for each other. He knew that he also really wanted to get closer to Sharon, but they could only meet once a week, and with that, silly Carla, so he had to do something. But he didn't realize that it would be so hard to find a way to spend time alone with her. The next day, Carla was sleeping in class as usual, and her friend tried to wake her up, but she had no intention of getting up until the lesson was over. The teacher was very annoyed by this attitude, and she did not intend to continue the lesson. So she told them that they would be taking an exam and that she had to make sure they had learned the topic well. The heroine was outraged that she should also suffer because of her and therefore accused the sleepy aristocrat of making the teacher angry, to which she began to make excuses as if she was not to blame because the story was very boring and she had not seen it. Sharon noticed that history probably wouldn't like her as much because she answered only two questions out of 30. She was a fashionista and didn't know what would happen in the future, but wasn't knowledge of history important for an aristocrat? The girl who disrupted the lesson was even happy that the lesson ended even earlier because of the test so they could go trick-or-treating. But the heroine intended to put an end to her carefree life and therefore assured her that if she answered the seven questions, the soldiers would leave. Carla started counting the number of seven questions, and after a moment was indignant at how many questions it was and asked how she was supposed to do it. The heroine did not intend to feel sorry for her and therefore briefly stated that she only needed to remember the fact that the empire was founded by Duncan. Her friend continued to pretend that for some reason it had always slipped her mind and she didn't need to know who founded the empire, which finally angered Sharon. And so she banged on the table, saying that if Carla was going to continue to play the fool, then she would do it herself. Carla began to apologize, asking not to be left behind, and then the heroine shouted that in this case she should start studying, and why she hadn't been able to remember anything at all, her friend was shocked by the shout in her direction, and in a moment they were already saying that they hated each other. At that moment, the nanny appeared, and she shocked the heroine with her appearance, as she did it almost without sound, and not noticeably, and she brought snacks, but it seemed like it was not at the right time, for which she apologized and just said quietly that they were still such children. When she finished, Sharon went out into the hallway to get some fresh air. Because of the heat, she had lost her appetite, when suddenly she heard strange sounds, and listening, she began to make out the words. It seemed to be the Duchess with some man, and they were discussing the inheritance, as if, because her husband was old, he had given most of what he had to Carla in advance, and if they managed to steal all her property, they could live together far away from here, and it was just a matter of getting her to trust her so that there would be no doubt, and then the plan would be put into action. In seven years, when Carla turns 15, that's when they will take away her title and all she has at all. This shocking news made the girl remember that it was exactly like that, after Carla was left with nothing because of her mother. She clung desperately to the prince, probably because she had nothing left but love. Returning back to the classroom, she found Carla sleeping on a book. Miss Deju began to worry that Sharon, for some reason, had a pale face. She could not let that witch take everything from Carla, and therefore, turning to the nanny, she said that she needed all the information about the Duchess, who she usually met with, what she was doing, and a list of those who were her lovers. The woman was somewhat puzzled by this order, and so she asked why the lady needed it, but the girl looked at her coldly and asked if she was still on her side. The true identity of Miss Deju was not revealed in the original novel until the very end, but she was far from an ordinary person, and if she took the right side, she could become a strong ally. The woman got down on one knee and smilingly said that she had first served her parents and then started serving her, and therefore she would never do anything that could harm the girl. Still addressing the heroine, she assured her that she plans to change the terrible things that are happening around Carla and the prince, or to be more precise, she wants to create a world where these children can be happy. But what about herself? Did she ever think about her own happiness? In any case, you can't do that to yourself. And therefore, if the girl is ready to entrust her with her future, she, in turn, will do everything she needs to do to make Sharon grow up happy. The next week, they came to visit again, 
and Carla hugged her friend cheerfully, thanking her for helping her, and she had done well only because of her. But the prince still insisted that she live with him in the palace, since she was a close relative of the duke, his mother would have approved of her request to stay in the palace, but when she refused, he sincerely did not understand why, because he could buy her lots of delicious food, expensive clothes, and do anything she wanted. Carla intervened, saying that Sharon would live only with her, but the boy insisted that she would live much better with him, and at that moment they started to fight again, and to calm them both down, the heroine said that if they continued to fight, she would not play with any of them anymore. The prince, after screaming, started to come to his senses a little bit, but he still said that it was a little difficult to calm down like that. But in this case, she said that even if it was difficult, they had to calm down, and then they both reluctantly agreed. The next day, when Carla came back with the books, she noticed that her friend was sleepy again, and she confirmed it, assuring her that daytime sleep was the highest grace, and therefore they could sleep. At that moment, Mrs. Deju appeared, and Carla told her that the girl was sleepy, but she apologized and assured her that it was urgent. She thought she had to leave right away because the prince really needed her. Carla was confused by this sudden announcement and could not believe that her friend was just going to the prince's house. Sharon saw the fright and worry in her friend's eyes, but she could not stay, so she assured her that she would return in two hours and until then, she would have to be without her, and if she read all the books that were there, the girl would let her sleep with her tonight. Already in the carriage, the heroine asked the nanny if she had prepared the medicine as she had previously asked, and what Julian's condition was now, as it might be worth calling a doctor. But Mrs. Deju assured her that this was not necessary, as the Empress beat the prince so that it was not noticeable in public, and there was no need to worry about being watched, and the woman had prepared for this and eliminated all possible dangers. She went inside, saw the boy in his bed, and immediately began to examine him, but fortunately his condition was not too critical, and so she asked why he did not cry when he was hurt, to which he assured her that tears would not help the cause, and in response he asked why she did not cry, and then the heroine said that she did not cry at all. Later, Miss Deju appeared, and said that it was time for them to return. The girl confirmed this, and then asked if all the servants who were near the prince were bribed, and the woman confirmed this, adding that they did everything as the empress wished. In this case, the heroine noted for herself that she needed to tell Julian to take good care of his diet and health, and that he should be more careful not to show his wounds to the servants, and that she should also bring some bath products. She looked at the woman for a moment and asked if it would be too much trouble, but she only said with satisfaction that the only person who was troublesome to her was her young lady. Later, they all went to a social event where the Duchess was present. Usually she didn't care about Carla, but there she suddenly became a very good mother because she had to show everyone how she takes care of the child. Carla, torn between being nice and sweet to Sharon and very patient and cold to Julian, seemed to be getting along. The other kids who were not so far away were scared of what had happened to them so suddenly. Last month they hadn't stopped fighting, and now it looked like they had a secret deal. One of the boys decided to find out, so he asked the prince directly if he had decided to get closer to Carla, because they had been fighting all the time before. But now everything seemed to be fine, and if he had decided to change his attitude towards her, since she would become his bride in the future, a statement like that disgusted him. Now they looked like a good couple, although they had not been without battles and reconciliations. A little later, Miss Deju brought a shining stone, claiming that she had found what she was looking for, and Carla asked with interest what it was, and Sharon explained that with the help of this beautiful stone, you can record sound and then play it back. Nanny also explained that thanks to it, you can transmit important messages in an encrypted form and so many people began to use the stone in their work, but it can also be used in more ordinary things. For example, you can record a song. Carla, sincerely happy about this, immediately asked what song they would be recording and if she could have the necklace. But when she found out that the heroine intended to give it to Julian, she shouted and asked why it was him and not her. 
The girl explained that the prince had no friends with whom he could sleep at night, and it was not nice to be so jealous because they had made up with him, and therefore it was better to think of it as a gift to a friend, to which the friend defiantly turned away and assured her that she did not want it to be given to him anyway. Later, they met with the prince again, and Carla came forward, saying that Sharon said it was a gift for him, and then as she held out the necklace, he was genuinely surprised, and the heroine said that it was nothing special, just a small lullaby, and if he suddenly couldn't sleep at night. After a little talk, Carla claimed that it was a joke, and therefore she needed the necklace back. But the guy had no intention of giving it back, because it was his gift. And especially since he liked it, Sharon may not have been able to sing, but her voice was still beautiful. The 59th day of summer was celebrated as a holiday dedicated to the day when the Clemency Empire planted its flag in this land, and all important statesmen, including the parents of the Prince and Carla, would come to this event. Carla asked her friend to go with them, but she didn't understand what they were talking about, because it was not a simple tea party, but an important public holiday, and she couldn't go. And although her friend convinced her that the heroine was her relative, and that she also had their blood in her, Sharon assured her that she still had the name Atrina. When he met Julian, he immediately asked her why she came alone and where Sharon was, to which she angrily said that she had not come here, and that he should not talk to her at all, as it was very annoying. And she did not look like she wanted to talk to him. She did not even see him. Another boy who was nearby was sincerely surprised by this reaction, because they had a good relationship not so long ago. Later, the emperor himself appeared, and looking at the other children, he realized that they were just stupid children who had no abilities. They had to hide in the shadow of the empress, and the able children were not allowed to appear at official celebrations because they could disgrace the honor of the imperial family. And in a moment, he announced in front of everyone that the prince was in trouble. There was a commotion around, and then he said in a stern tone that the Empress might not even try to justify herself, as he had been personally informed about it. And so he asked how she dared to mutilate the Prince's body, and who gave her this right, and Julian himself, quietly looking at the floor, realizing that no one could save him. When Carla returned, she immediately ran to her friend to report the fact that the Empress had beaten the Prince. And after that, she dragged the boy to the palace, so she and Haru saw Julian get hit, but he took the girl away from there, so she couldn't see what happened next. The heroine turned to Miss Deju, asking if she had been told what the boy was doing, and she confirmed it, adding that he was alone in his room and that it was probably worth going there. As Nanny approached the castle, in front of other people, she said that everyone on the road had been successfully neutralized, so she could go there safely. The girl asked who the people in cloaks were near her, whether they were knights or someone else. But the woman only smiled and reminded her that they had agreed not to ask such questions. Stopping in front of the wall, Mrs. Deju suddenly began to cast magic, and a magic seal appeared on the surface of the wall. The woman explained that what she was about to use was ancient magic, and only a few people in the entire palace possessed it. And in a moment, the walls parted. And after Mrs. Deju made sure that it was calm, she allowed the heroine to go, asking her to be careful, and if she needed her help, she would be waiting here. The girl set off along the cleared road, knowing that Julian was waiting for her at the end, and once in his room, a sword was immediately pointed at her. But when he saw who came, he lowered his weapon in shock, and the heroine explained that Carla had told her, and she knew some people in the palace. She hugged him, thus calming him down. And the guy happily said that he had guessed that she had people here who were watching him. He just couldn't help but know it, because it was obvious. And he also assured her that he was not in pain at all, so he shouldn't cry. Sharon blamed herself for not being able to do anything. And then Prince touched his forehead to hers, wondering what he deserved from a beautiful lady like her. After which they both started laughing, asking each other if they were really eight years old. In parting, he said that if she wanted to see him, she could come at any time and he would be waiting. But the girl knew that this would not always be the case, because she was just an observer. Therefore, she just has to change the water in the aquarium on time, 
feed her favorite fish, and maintain all the conditions for life, although she could dispel their loneliness by giving them care and love. But one day, they will have to leave this world, so if her favorite fish in the aquarium can become friends, that will be enough for her. At the entrance, she met Miss Deju, who told her that the lady was late, and so she began to worry that she shouldn't have let her go to the palace alone, because anything could have happened there. The lady asked me to stop making such a big deal of it, because nothing terrible would have happened, and added that the prince said he was aware that he was being watched. He certainly noticed earlier than expected, but it was not surprising. He was constantly being watched from everywhere, and he probably began to instinctively feel it, and he also knew that he was not being watched by the imperial family. After sitting down in the carriage and thinking a bit, Miss Deju said that she was somehow sure that the young lady in front of her was not the one she knew before, and therefore asked if she would like to bet. They had a chance to find out who was the first of them, could find out the true identity of the other, and the bet could be something trivial, such as the fulfillment of the winner's wish. Later, they were all visiting again, and the girl noticed that the empress was not there, and the prince came alone, and he said that his mother had said that she would no longer come here, most likely because she was overwhelmed with work. In this case, the heroine handed him a package of sweets, to which he said that he did not like sweets very much. Carla already had time to rejoice, as it meant that she would get more, but Sharon, nevertheless, insisted that he take it, after which she again began to teach her friend that even if Julian said that he did not like sweets, it still did not mean that you could eat everything yourself. You always need to share with your friends. The boy was very surprised because she really wanted to give them to him, and then Sharon explained that she had originally bought them for her friend, but she decided to share them with him. Later, Carla cheerfully asked if they were going on a picnic today, and Sharon confirmed it, adding that Mrs. Deju would soon pick them up. The prince began to worry, because if he went outside the palace, his mother would be angry, but the heroine assured him that nothing would happen, because she had already received permission. And looking at her friends slyly, she realized that there would be no problems if he spent time with Carla. Arriving at the picnic site, Sharon fell into a deep shock. Miss Deju introduced the boy to her as her younger brother, named Karan, and seeing the heroine's surprise, noticed that judging by her face, she liked him. The girl immediately began to make excuses, saying that it was not like that at all, and she had no thoughts of dating him, let alone falling in love, but in a moment she realized that eight-year-olds do not talk like that. At that moment, she suddenly remembered her boyfriend, whom she broke up with after 10 years of relationship. Even after the breakup, they remained so close that they couldn't be just friends, but his mother desperately didn't want to accept her even as his friend, and so she had to cut off the relationship with him completely, even though he didn't want to let her go. This man looked exactly like her last boyfriend, but he was not him at all, and so she asked him to stop talking about it. And this guy was not her type. Miss Deju was surprised by this, or at least pretended to be surprised, and so she said that it seemed that the girl had high expectations and even wondered what kind of guy should be like to fully meet her standards and whether there was such a handsome man in the world. Julian watched this in silence. He didn't know if it would be better to intervene now or just keep quiet. Marriage was usually made to unite two families or to make a peaceful union if there was enmity between the families. But when he thought about what was in store for Sharon, he had an unpleasant feeling. Fortunately, the girl was not interested in this, but his heart was still somehow uneasy. Carla and Julian were playing in the lake, splashing water, and the girl wanted her friend to come to her, but the heroine had no such desire and only pointed out that she looked stupid. She knew that if she didn't go, she wouldn't get wet, and she and the boy could play together, and Julian even looked like a child his own age when he played. After they threw water on each other, Carla, who was getting angry again, asked him briefly if he wanted to die, and he said the same thing in response. And at that moment, they both had the same thought, that they didn't know why, but they didn't want to lose to this child. A little later, when everyone was tired, the children were doing their own thing, and the heroine and the nanny were discussing important things, 
The woman recalled that the Duke had mentioned that she could easily choose a lawyer she liked, and she tried to find someone reliable, but the search was unsuccessful, and after thinking about it a bit, she came to the conclusion that she should entrust it to Quran, who may have looked a little immature, but he was actually the best student at the Academy's law school. Before she could finish the conversation, Sharon was suddenly pulled by the hand right into the water, and everyone started laughing together, and the evil girl threatened that when she got out of here, they would be dead. Suddenly, she slipped, and at that moment, she began to drown. Panic started among everyone, and the woman did not allow them to come closer. The girl was underwater. She sincerely could not understand whether she was really going to have such a stupid end, but when she had already lost all hope, the guy saved her. She woke up in some dark and cold place, not knowing where she was. It was like a dream, as if she had died. Suddenly, she heard a voice repeating over and over that it was not her. The heroine began to ask who was here and who she was, but the voice still kept repeating that it was not her. And after a moment, the voice began to call her name, over and over again, and the girl recognized it as Carla's voice, and these voices began to drive her crazy. Suddenly, she heard crying. It seemed that Carla started crying, as well as Julian. And so, looking into the void, the heroine apologized. But it seemed that it was time for her to go, to the children who needed her so much. When she woke up again, the first thing she saw was Deju-san's happy face, claiming that she was finally awake. There was not much of a mess, after all. After she passed out, she was visited by the prince. He had secretly come here with Haru last night, and he still had not left the manor, so he should leave soon before dawn. She approached the room where the boy was, knocked to open the door, and at the same moment the door opened. Julienne was very happy to see her, and immediately hugged her tightly, so hard that she began to choke, followed by a sleepy Haru, who was also happy that she woke up because the prince was stubborn as a ram, so he did not want to leave until she came to her senses. The girl asked him for forgiveness. He must have been hurt. His voice was trembling. He must have been very worried. And knowing this, she could not be angry with him. It was four o'clock in the morning, so she sent them to bed, but she did not intend to go to bed, as she had been told that she had been lying there for three days, and now she was going to take a bath. At that moment, we heard Carla's scream, who also came running as soon as she found out that her friend had finally woken up, and she was scared to ask if Sharon was in any pain and how she was feeling, as she was scared to death, stroking her friend's head. The heroine asked her why she was so scared, and Carla explained that she was afraid that Sharon would not open her eyes again, and she would not be able to spend time with her anymore, and she was also afraid that she would be hated, but the heroine assured her that this would never happen. At this point, Miss Deju assured her that she wanted to take a bath, and at this point, Carla hugged her friend tightly, assuring her that she also wanted to go swimming with her. The nanny, after thinking a bit, said that they were still small, so it would be okay if they took a bath together, and Sharon herself could not believe that she was serious. In the end, the heroine agreed. When she saw Carla, who did not want to let her go, her heart felt incredibly warm. This feeling was very exciting and tender, as if her whole body was dipped in warm honey water. It seems that people in this world loved her more than she thought. Autumn came and the girls tried on dresses. Carla, having tried on one, said that it seemed to be too short for her. The heroine, who was nearby, confirmed this, adding that it was bought last spring, but nothing could be done, and so it was probably worth buying a few new ones. So the girl asked Miss Deju what the prince's schedule was tomorrow, and she assured her that tomorrow was not a busy day, and he would be free in the morning. And then the girl asked if the three of them could go to update their wardrobe. Carla was very happy to hear this, and asked her to buy her a yellow dress. Her friend agreed, adding that she was counting on the help of a nanny, and she said she would send an official invitation to the Imperial Palace. Later, all three of them found themselves in a store, and while Sharon and Julian were looking at the magazine, Carla tried everything on, and when she found something she liked, she asked her friend if it was beautiful. Looking at the girl, the heroine asked her to stop buying everything, because she had already bought six dresses, and although she complained that she could not just leave such beauty, 
Sharon assured her that next year everything would be too small for her, so she could not. Then Carla said she was going to the ladies' room. Her friend ordered her to change first, but she started to get hysterical and refuse. This behavior annoyed Sharon. She behaved like a capricious five-year-old, although she was already eight, and the prince at that time looked completely indifferent to everything. And then she decided to ask him how he liked the dress, showing him the model. He said without looking that it was beautiful. But turning around, he asked if she was really planning to wear it, but she didn't understand, as it looked quite nice. And she also noticed that she would like to buy him something, so she should choose wisely. The boy briefly said that the Imperial Palace was full of different clothes, but the girl assured him that it would be a special gift that she would buy him, and then he had no choice but to agree. But before that, he had to wash his hands, so he suggested that she look for it herself. Miss Deju, who was nearby, assured her that the young lady should also buy clothes, but the girl did not see the need, because she could easily walk in what she had, to which the woman reminded her that she was also growing, and the dress she was wearing now showed it, and the heroine confirmed it. She had really grown up. She had always forgotten that she was eight years old. After hearing this, the nanny said that the young lady was still a child, but very often behaved far beyond her age. Carla heard this conversation, and having met the prince nearby, she asked if Sharon was really their age. She just always behaved like an adult, good at many things, calm, and also loves to read books and also studies well, and is not afraid of thunder at all. The boy confirmed this. It was quite strange. It was as if there was a heterogender in her. Carla had no idea what it was, and Julian noticed this, assuring her that she could use more books, after which the girl ran to her friend, saying that the boy was insulting her again. The heroine realized that even though they pretended not to know, it turned out that they still felt something strange, that she had a secret. But even though they guessed that she had a secret, they still did not treat her worse. It seemed that it was important for them to have her around. Later, the first snow fell, and Carla ran to the window in excitement, also pointing it out to her friend, who didn't think about it, saying that it was just white garbage. The girl sincerely didn't understand that snow was garbage, and Sharon, realizing his mistake, hastily corrected himself, assured her that it was actually very beautiful. She said it out of old habit, didn't even think about it. It was as if they had been discussing snow yesterday. Time flew by very quickly. It feels like it was spring not long ago. And if you think about it, she moved here in spring and everything was the same. She continued to be in Sharon's body, by chance. Her thoughts were interrupted by Carla who asked her curiously what she was thinking about. But the girl looked uncertain, took her friend's hand, and assured her that it was nothing, and now it was better to go eat. In that winter nose, she suddenly realized that perhaps there would be no turning back, and she would most likely have to spend the rest of her life here. In the library, the heroine reminded her friend that she would remember reading and their argument, to which she assured her that she remembered everything and would definitely win this time. It was Carla Venice von Gratone, and she was 14 years old at the time. The girl asked if she could do it. She could go with her friend to the night market, and he confirmed it, assuring her that she should try her best. The girl saw blood. Her hands were covered in blood, and there was a dead baby next to her, and a moment later she woke up screaming. Her eyes were in tears, and her friend who was sleeping next to her noticed, but Sharon pretended that everything was fine, so she suggested that she continue to sleep. But she couldn't fall asleep easily anymore. She was scared. But she convinced herself that it was nothing, and she would be able to wake up. But she realized that she missed her life in Korea very much. That she really couldn't go back. These words woke Carla up, and she claimed that her friend had been talking in her sleep. And now she was wondering what had happened, and who she missed, and where she couldn't go back to. Sharon, turning around in shock, asked if she had said all this in her sleep, but after a moment, she assured her that it was about a dream, and she shouldn't take it into account. She realized that if this world really could not accept her, and because of this, it constantly showed her in her dreams that an ominous future awaited her, 
Perhaps it was hurrying her to return to where she had come from. When she came to visit Prince again, he immediately asked where Carla was and why she came alone, to which she asked what was wrong and whether he didn't like her coming alone, and then said that she had been having stomach aches since the morning. The guy noticed that she was probably planning to do something bad under the guise of this, and Sharon supported this idea. But today, the guy was surprisingly angry and kept saying to himself what she was planning this time and why she had been behaving like this since childhood. The friend asked what had happened, and the prince coldly stated that Carla did not want to get married. The problem was not even that she did not want to get married, but that it had reached the empress, and he did not know what she could do. The girl realized that breaking off the engagement between Carla and the prince was a rather dangerous action. If this happened, the relationship between the empress and the duchess would be broken, and then the prince might lose his support. Moreover, the duchess would not leave alone her daughter who was against her orders, and therefore she would most likely try to find another favorable party for Carla. And at this moment, the girl also wondered what Carla was really up to. In the meantime, she was talking to Miss Deju, saying that she hoped she had managed to shock her a little bit. She made a little joke about her mother, and her face was quite funny, and the woman asked why she did it. And in response, the girl said that she just thought that if she tried to do it, her mother and father would at least listen to her. But it turned out that she did not know a lot about her parents. The nanny asked if that was why she had such a wound, and now she understood perfectly well why the girl did not want to show herself in front of Miss Sharon. And in response, smiling lightly, Carla confirmed that it could be called that. But the woman asked her not to laugh when talking about it, and not to hide her emotions like an adult. She began to think about how it would be bad if she ended up marrying Julian, because he was in love with her friend, he was very faithful, and it felt like he would only look at Sharon for the rest of his life, feeling love for her. And at that moment, she quietly said that it would be perfect. A couple of Prince and Sharon. Yesterday, she heard her friend crying in her dream very clearly, saying that she would not be able to go back. And so now, addressing Miss Deju, she said that she had actually decided to meet with her because she had a request. She had a feeling that Sharon might leave this place and not come back, and so she could not let that happen. Carla asked her to do it unilaterally. The woman frowned, saying that she had just said dangerous things, to which the girl, lightly sipping tea, explained that one day when she needed it, she just wanted the woman to find this person for her, and maybe she did not understand why she needed it now, but the girl assured her that everything would be clear soon. The prince went on to explain that if he suddenly lost the protection of the ducal family, he would become a bird without wings at that very moment, and if something went wrong, he would rather end up on the guillotine than on the throne. The heroine decided to support the guy, saying that he shouldn't say such things, and he wouldn't die, because if he suddenly died, she would die after him. The duke was in the same boat as him. The prince was skeptical of such reassuring words asking if she really believed in the gossip that was going around the people about the immortality of the emperor. And, after a moment, he asked uncertainly if the Duke of Grittoni was really in the same boat as him. Sharon assured him that she did not believe in it at all, but in response asked if he himself could believe in something, that they were being watched by a god, and he would definitely not let them offend. Hearing this, the guy smiled nervously, said that it seemed her god was good, but his was not. He never fulfilled the wishes he desperately wanted to fulfill. Suddenly, the girl took him by the cheeks, assuring him that she understood everything, and in that case she would listen to his wishes, and of course fulfill them to the best of her ability, and she would become a personal god for him. Holding her hand and feeling a little shy, he realized that for him she was now ready to become even a god, which made it even harder to take her for an ordinary child. After finishing, the heroine went back and started to call out to her friend from the doorway and saw Miss Deju, who, exhaling heavily, said that she already knew why she was looking for Carla. And then the girl noticed that something was wrong and therefore asked where she was and why, when Sharon returned, she was nowhere to be found. The woman became quiet and after a moment explained that she hadn't left the bathroom all day, was tired and fell asleep there. Later, they gathered at the table for lunch, 
and Sharon decided to ask why her friend had suddenly started to resist talking about the engagement, and if she really didn't want to, to which she assured her that she didn't want to break off the engagement. She was just angry with her mother, but now everything was fine. Suddenly, the heroine noticed that Julian wanted to see Carla, and it seemed as if he was sad for her, at which point Carla began to accuse her friend of taking the side of the prince, and at that moment, she was screaming and asking if he was closer to her than she was, and why Sharon did this to her. When the heroine got tired of these screams, she said that she had thought of going to the palace together, but now she would go alone, and in response, Carla continued her hysteria, assuring that she would not go anywhere alone, and she really wanted to go only with her. 